so let me give you a title. Yeah. Thank you, Dale. That's very nice of you. Um, I'm a terrible public speaker, um, so bear with me. Um, I've been involved in municipal politics for probably since uh, 79 and have been involved in communities all up and down the West Coast uh, and involved on in all different levels. And the story I'd like to tell tonight is of a community that I was involved in in 1980. And that community was 40,000 people. And at that time, the city council and the planning commission were both made up of real estate people top to bottom. And they were very happily rezoning properties to their friends' advantages. And neighborhoods were being converted from single family uh, to condominiums. And that was the big rage at the time. So, um, you know, we, uh, those of us in the neighborhood said, hey, we've invested in our neighborhoods. These are our neighborhoods. But you'd have these people come in who were from out of town. They'd buy a piece of property, make friends with the right people, and start building up these things were inappropriate for our, the existing neighborhood. So we got involved because it's our community. And we'd go up and stand before city council, and they literally, I have videotape, would gavel us down and say, even though it was a public meeting, this is not a public meeting, sit down, shut up. So that was the uh, climate that I came to this with. Well, obviously we didn't think that was wonderful. We, like you would not put up with that. So we formed a citizens group. And I think this is the point and why I think it's important here. We had our citizens group, we held meetings much like this, and we worked for two years building up. We had newsletters, we had cake sales, we did the usual thing. We met every month or so, and we identified issues. We stood up before city council as a group. We put out uh, a newsletter. We asked, knowing amongst our community, that there were people who were lawyers, there were people who were planners, there were people with pre professional credentials that we could use as our group, representing us, the citizens, before the city council. We had lawyers, pro bono lawyers, very good pro bono lawyers. And so I, in fact, cut my teeth on evaluating environmental impact reports. I go through stacks of documents this thick, looking for internal consistencies. And that way, we would provide the information to the lawyers. The lawyers would then put together briefs. They'd stand before city council. The council would gavel us down. The city attorney would file motions. We were paying the city attorney, and we were paying, and you know, we were fighting ourselves to some degree. But as we, and we held referendums, um, the real estate agents or real estate industry uh, and one of our referendums spent $40,000 on one initiative. We, with our bake sales, raised, I think it was $1,600. We won. We kept doing this. And the community saw that, gee, we the people actually can be effective against big money, against the established system. We, you know, we actually demonstrated in the paper, and the paper Fortunately, unlike the one here, actually did have a very vibrant letters to the editor section. And so we would communicate the ideas and what the issues were and why we should be concerned and why we should be involved. And after two years of doing this, came election cycle. So we, amongst our group, found three people who were just decent, honest people that would listen and represent the interests of the group of a whole. They weren't big firebrands, they were just good, decent people. We ran them, we had a council of five, we had three seats up, slate of three, we ran a slate, which was again, never had been done in the city before. We won all three seats. One of the first actions was, fire the city attorney. <laughs> Second action, fire the director of community development. We appointed our own people on there, there was obviously a lot of contention, we won, we maintained. That was in 1982. I was down checking them out not that long ago. The community is still very much like it was 30 years ago. Um, the condominium, we called it condomania at the time. That was our phrase, our battle cry at the time was stop condomania. And the condominium, there's development, there's growth. We, uh, our lawyers, uh, put together the very first growth control ordinance for the community. And of course it was challenged and we called it unconstitutional, all the rest of it. It was challenged, it upheld to this day, still there. 
and it puts a lottery system so that there can be growth in the community, but it's managed growth. And it was the community that dictated. It's the community that had a uh, significant impact on anything that happened in the city. And I think that that's a lesson that Port Angeles really, really needs to learn that we can form a citizens group, that it's our interest and it's not those people out there representing us, but we helping our representatives in doing their job. And that if we can get together, maybe this might be people here to start the core group of that. But that if we work towards elections down the line and build up the public's trust so that people know who we are and what we do and what the answers are and what we try to do and that we're here for the community, that people will support us and then we support our candidates. Instead of having a situation where people run for office three weeks or three months before election time, you barely even know who they are. You may mark a, um, a, you know, get very low voter turnout because nobody knows who they are because it's been such a short time. And then they're left to dangle. You sit there, have nobody, you know, you're left your own, yourself out on the council or on the commission or wherever you are, rather than having a whole group of organization behind you that supports you through your action on the commission or on the council. Anyway. Good idea. Anybody have any questions for Tyler?